He was somebody that a jazz and heritage festival of New Orleans, you know, they call it Jazz and Heritage Festival. It's really Heritage of Jazz Festival. And so Mac is somebody that ha would have to be there, you know, like every time. Right, right. It seemed like he made a transition from the Dr. John, the Night Tripper persona into um, right place, wrong time. Really, really kind of. Um, Which take... was Alan, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's right. Right place, wrong time. Well, he got less flamboyant. <laughs> I mean, almost anything would be less flamboyant <laughs> yeah. than when, when he had big feathers and glitter all over him and throw, throwing glitter out of a pouch and stuff. But he always, you know, was, was Mac with those voodoo roots of New Orleans. You know, he always had on his piano, he would have the candle wit, he would have the little skull, he would have the purple cloth, and then, um, you know, he'd come shuffling out. Mac, <laughs> Mac when, he, when he would come out to the stage and, and when he would get up and play guitar, he was kind of like, I don't know, like, like a polar bear on a qualute. <laughs> you know, I mean, he just had, he just moved, you know, like this and like that. But I think he always, you know, had the root of the culture that he had blown up so big, you know, in those first years. And uh, I think he went from, he was a guitar player, all through, you know, initially. He was a guitar player, and he still played guitar, but I think one of his fingers got shot off. Yes. Yeah, right? Yeah. And that took him over to the piano. He could play, like Alan Toussaint could play anything, right? And his signature song is Tipitina, which the club is named after. And it's very, it's hard to play. It's unique. It's hard to play in rhythm. Well, Alan could play it, but when Mac played it, it was really the song. I mean, he was, he just was deep in that. And, and he, it was a part of him, like it was a part of Fess. And just Mac was, as, <laughs> You know, New Orleans is full of characters. <laughs> One of the things that well unique, said, well that's said. unique about New Orleans and New Orleans music, I mean, James Booker, right? Here's a genius, an absolute genius, piano playing genius, you know, with an eye patch with a star on it. And, oh man, we've had some, we have, their characters generally. His playing was just amazing. Yeah. Just be 
me cause I'm in misery in misery I won't beg for no sympathy sing a song well but if it's not asking too much set kind of loosely but I remember him being the white cat that talked like he was from around the corner from my house <laughs> he, sounded, he sounded I mean at my first impression that's what it was I, I mean who is this hip ass white dude who's in, obviously he was respected by everybody on the scene when you look at everybody who was around you know because I, I mean I remember going to like Cosmo Studios back when it was maybe on Camp Street, I believe, somewhere like that. Um, and I remember when Alan Toussaint and those guys' office was on St. Philip Street. It was like a house, like a duplex house, and that was like their office and all of that stuff. And that was just part of the, the scene. That was like where I would maybe go with my dad you know, as a little, little one. And I remember Mac being this cat that was like, he was obviously respected by everybody. And I mean, he was a musician, you know, he played guitar, he played keyboards. I remember later on seeing that he, he, he took on the persona of the night, the night trip of thing and the guy, right. I'm like, oh, that's, the, that's Dr. John. And, you know, he was one of those guys that I would see him every now and every so often. He would pop up and and Dr. John would be where, whatever the set might have been, you know, um, whether it be at a recording studio or at somebody's house or at RT's house or something. And Dr. John's on the scene and he just had this 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 air about him, the way he talked, the way he dressed. He was just hip. He was like, <laughs> if there was a, you know, I mean, I knew a lot of hip people. I mean, I had seen and encountered a lot of hip people. Some of them like real bad cats, you know. Some of them like you would, would scare the shit out of you. <laughs> but I definitely, he was definitely up there as far as one of the hippest people that I had ever seen. I mean, he's up there with probably my Uncle Jolly would be, that was like the coolest, hippest cat that I had ever seen when I was growing up. My, my great uncle Jolly and Dr. John was like right in that category, like right up under Jolly. Dr. John, as far as the all time hippest cats that I had ever met or ever encountered, and that was him, Dr. John. Why well, yeah, my no Avis? Another Dr. John classic. Talking about I've been hoodoo.
the opportunity to play on a, a, a big gig uh, with him. That was probably one of my favorite gigs that I ever did as a side guy in a group backing up a bunch of people. It was a thing called Lightning in a Bottle. And it was a concert that was filmed. I believe it was at maybe like Radio City, was it Radio City Music Hall, somewhere like that? Somewhere like that, it was in New York, it was a big deal and it was, all these amazing uh, blues artists. I mean, everybody from B.B. King to Bonnie Raitt to Ruth Brown. Wow. You name them. Uh, to, to, to Hubert Sumlin, to Lazy Lester. Uh -huh. I'm talking about, oh man. Who's who? It's this epic. was a, and this was a, this was a, uh, it was filmed. It was executive produced by Martin Scorsese. Mm. And it was, a, it was a big deal and I was in the band. I was uh, playing organ, and Mac was playing piano. Ah. So backing up all these artists, and Steve Jordan was the band leader, and Levon played on some stuff, and the, the band was just like insane. It was like Willie Weeks and Larry Taylor shared the bass wow. chair. You had Keb Moe and Danny Korchmeyer was playing guitars. Wow. 
and, and the horn section included uh, uh, some of the Memphis horn cats. Matter of fact, it was the guy, the one guy that was just, that survived the ben, oldest ben Rebbe. Colley. Ben Cauley was on, on trumpet. Yes, Ben Cauley, exactly. He was in there, and the, I was playing organ, and Mac was playing piano. That was my old, that was like the mo the coolest wow. gig I ever played. Wow. And just getting to sit side by side with him during the rehearsals, during the, you know, the whole, it was like a week we spent going over songs and backing up people, and then we did the show. Yeah. 